Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Olympic season 2017 2018. Jonathan, we are old. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I was just like, whoa, this is not 1994. Anyway, welcome back to the skating lesson and this and that. It's been a while. I actually saw you recently. You're currently in Vancouver performing. What you, which opera are you performing? Well, ironically enough, Turandot. So seeing all these Turandot programs like debut, it's a, like really nice reminder that I need to look at my music. <laughs> I think that you could explain what's going on in these programs for all of us. It's a big choice this year, but uh, yes, an oldie but a goodie. It's an yeah. oldie. I'm more okay with the Turandot uh, than the others. Not Agreed. to be confused with Turando, which is what I want to call it from years of watching ABC. You, know what? you can justify either way. Oh, so you're. Fine. Okay. I just. You're okay. <laughs> well, let's start off. There's been a lot happening since we last recorded shows. Let's start. We have some unfortunate news. I think we're just gonna. We should just start and discuss mm -hmm. it. Um, we obviously have to talk about Gracie Gold. She's someone that we've talked about for years on the show, and I really feel for her because Gracie's lived under a a small microscope in the large scheme of life, but in the skating world, you know, the focus has always been on her, and. I I feel for her. You know, I think she's taken time off. I believe she's away, um, you know, taking care of herself. And, and I really wish her the best. And I really feel for someone. And I was wondering if you've seen this happen in opera before, where someone has so much potential and they struggle. And then it just becomes a compounding thing that happens more and more and more and more. Well, it's a bit too much too soon, right? A lot happened for her pretty much right away, and then we always had revisionist history because, you know, she always had her ups and downs and mm -hmm. and things that have come to light maybe were problems throughout. A lot of people just didn't know about it, perhaps. So it's really sad, you know, she had some family problems and she has her own issues that she's dealing with, and, and you just feel sad because it's... You know, even when she continued to do these exhibitions and shows and go to Cham's camp, when maybe it was apparent the best thing to do was to take some time off. Even since last fall, it was arguably time to, to take that time off. Um, and then even in the articles, it talks about her potentially coming back for the Grand Prix. I mean, I'm assuming that's just what was being said. And so, I, hope I mean, even that, I, I feel, I mean, some of these articles with journalism, at some point, it's... Yeah, I get that there are contracts and everything, and I get that that's part of why she had to appear in shows. Things are signed, and she's also a breadwinner for her family at that point uh, in time. And you start to think, you see her give some of these interviews where you can only imagine where you have to dissociate from your body. Obviously, if you're taking a month off, I mean, we had heard over the summer that she hadn't had her double axle back, and, you know, it was not, you know, looking up for her, and Obviously, that's a hard thing to do on the world stage. You're Gracie Gold. You have all of this talent. I still think she has a lot of talent. I think that there's always been something beneath the surface with her, like wanting to come out. We always talked about how the music was not right for her. But I remember when she skated that Firebird, it was like the first time she had real choreography and she was all doing the bird thing by the boards and like taking pictures and, oh, everyone yeah. loves the bird. And it was like, oh, you've got choreography for the first time that you like. And then... Yeah. It and makes went, such a sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we went back to the princess thing, but it, it always seems like they've been trying to package her and mold her, and, oh, it's like that old MGM studio system, you know, you can't... Yeah, uh, and it robbed her of maybe her identity and, and what she did best, so... Yeah, I, it's, I hope she finds it again. Yeah, I mean, I think she has a lot of talent. I, I don't think we're, we're the last of her. I'll be curious if she works in the media at the Olympics this year or does something. I, I think that yeah. she probably has a lot to offer and look, whether she's running Spartan races or competing, I think that she's got a lot of athletic ability. Oh, yeah. She's got yeah. charisma. There's a certain something to her. Um, also, Yulia Lipnitskaya. I, um, I was, you know, looking back and thinking back because I was thinking back when we actually interviewed Gracie when I, we were out in LA and she kept on talking about that girl, who's that girl? And it was thinking about there's this thing in skating sometimes and maybe in opera too, where you're only as good as your last performance, your last results. And it seemed like there yeah. was an identity thing going on. And with Yulia, it seems like 
people are still talking about her from 2014, and obviously she's a person. She's evolved. They still, obviously everyone remembers Schindler's List. She's obviously much more than that. Uh, And I um, I do think... You know, it was so much attention Mm -hmm. so soon. And actually, with her, like, breakout performance in the team event, remember, the pressure, she, she was already succumbing to it a week later. <laughs> like, it, she was, it was never really something she was ready to deal with, and you can tell she's kind of an any kind of person, and I think she even said as much in the interview. She was like, I'm an introvert, and all of this is just too much, and I'm not interested in this world anymore, and it's just too much. And I thought it was interesting that she said she wished she had just taken all the time off starting last November mm-hmm. out of Russia. And it was kind of the same time as you wished Gracie had just yeah. taken the time. But when you, when you sense that you need it, it's important to take it, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I still, I don't, I don't know we're ever going to get the full story of what happened at Cup of Russia or any of that, but it, it looks a little tortured. But I was thinking about when you rewatch her from the Olympic event, and we had talked about technique and people were very angry. We got a lot of hate uh, uh, <laughs> uh, messages. Welcome to the Olympic season. But Terry Tubridz's technique traditionally has favored the really small girls. And mm-hmm. Tom Z says that when you have the little jumps that are kind of spinny in the air that don't get the big height, they're able to be more consistent. But they have a very small shelf life. And it requires girls to be very, very tiny and very, very thin. And the second right. they eventually grow up to become women or get taller, the physics can, change. For the that, physics yeah. change. And Lipnitskaya is someone who suffered this in a big way. I think we saw a little bit the test event Medvedeva is adjusting to her height. She mm-hmm. looks to have a little bit of a better handle on it than Yulia did. But if you look at Yulia's jumps in the team event, she was already hanging on for dear life. And by the time it got to, although her GOEs didn't reflect that, by the Correct. time you got to the individual <laughs> event, the pressure and everything it was really and she never really got those jumps consistently yeah. again and then had to relearn them so i you know i worry about the girls um in going forward obviously it's just a huge problem in skating it's a huge problem and it was interesting in some of the articles that were released about julia julia she mm-hmm. was saying that it's not really discussed in russia mm-hmm. you know there is although it's a limited dialogue there is some dialogue about it in the united states north america these sorts of things but Really, it seemed like in Russia, no one talks freely about it. They just In Russia, saying, and in Russian skating, no one freely talks about it. I mean, that's... I remember my coach asked me once why Jenny retired. And I was trying to say, um, well, uh, she... It's just not a topic that is open. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's discussed as much. Uh, but, you know, I'll be interested to see what she does. She says she wants to go to school and not interested in shows at... Uh, but you know, I think she's obviously so like Janet Lynn type that just kind of disappears, right? Yes. You know, Catalina will be at like every function she can, like cutting every ribbon, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it's the difference between the two. Yeah. Okay, so Adelina, I forget what the in, what the injury is that she has this season, but I've been watching her over the summer, and you know, she was supposed to be training with Plashenko, which obviously seemed like a big right. publicity opportunity, and then they never showed him at his rink when they. Instagram every five... I mean, I start to see these kids that have a monocum of talent, but that he's spending a lot of time with, and they're getting better. Um, right. I mean, he's making the most out of some kids that are really subpar uh, right. in terms of natural ability. Uh, but you, and you watch him, and uh, she was never shown, but she was living quite the life, and I, I don't know if she... She should be enjoying it. I just don't understand this, like need to like pretend they may or may not come back for the Olympics. It's like even with Marilyn Charlie's announcement or when NBC Olympics put up like Jeremy's announcement and it was like, well, yeah, of course. Didn't we just know these people weren't coming back? Well, Were we pre- Johnny Weir was uh, reworking his technique after 2010 and then like three weeks later he could barely do a triple toe in a show because he had been off the ice and... Yeah, like why are we pretending? I don't understand. Michelle Kwan is technically not retired. So she's just oh, taking it okay. year by year. So, okay, yeah, okay. She's just going to assess after the we're summer. We're going to get to skater um, dialogue and, and the reactions if you okay. want to watch as we get through because I don't know if it's a cultural thing that we have to put the positive spin on everything, but it's, it's right. become much. The skating right. answers have taken like a new level of BS that I think that it's, yeah. it's a little <laughs> difficult to swallow at times. Um, and also... Sad news. I mean, I think this goes into the will they compete, will they compete. You're possibly the biggest fan of Satoko Miyahara 
of uh, all time. Yeah. She's had this hip fracture. We know hip injuries are pesky in skating. They can reemerge. I believe she had a fracture. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know of what, that she had a fra- something in her hip was fractured. Uh, is she out for the entire Grand Prix? What is your understanding of it? Well, I mean, it was sad, but I'm just really glad so far that, mm-hmm. well, it could mean one of two things that she's actually taking this time, that it's so much more horrible than they're mm-hmm. talking about, mm-hmm. or that they really are being careful to not push her. You know, I could have seen her being pressured into going to Worlds last year because they needed the spots, and of course... They lost the one spot, but um, I'm glad she is taking the time Mm -hmm. because there is no rush. She doesn't, and even it says she's still preparing for the Grand Prix. Again, I hope she doesn't do the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not, I I don't know that it's necessary, but my other fear is that she's actually completely unable to do it because it's so much worse than they're leading on. Um, I I think you can never take it seriously, whatever they're saying. I will watch show skating if Satoko wants to do shows. If Satoko yeah, wanted to watch Disney on Ice, I would watch her put on one of the wigs, like yeah, yeah. Mariah Bell's sister and Alexa Gillis. She could do Frozen. I mean, I would watch whatever she's yeah. doing. Uh, it would be sad. She would be very missed this yeah. season if, if she doesn't come back at yeah, all. We saw I her in a yeah. show, and she opened up, I believe, on a triple, or it was a double axle or a triple that she opened up on midway through, and it looked like things were still a struggle, but the skating is still there. I mean, she is yeah, someone yeah. where she really learned how to skate properly. And the mm-hmm. one thing I'll say about Satoko is that, um, you know, for as much as skating coaches have this make it or break it kind of attitude and, uh, or, you know, thought process, so, um, Mihamada was at the World Arena, and obviously they were quite a number of top coaches that were there for the jump clinic. I think it was called the Jump On It Camp, Jonathan. Oh, we got <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Nothing for the Jump On It, and obviously I was like, tell me everything. I mean, what? But they said that she's someone that coaches her skaters with a lot of compassion. I mean, very focused intensity, but she does have compassion for the emotions and she's not doesn't, didn't appear, at least during those weeks, to be some sort of monster. Her skaters right. skate with a lot of emotion. They seem to be very artistic. And I think she's someone that appears to take that all into account. So yeah. I think perhaps she is kind of taking the human element of Satoko and trying to get her yeah. back. I mean, I so. making the Japanese team this year is going to be difficult. Uh, yeah. Hearts are going to be broken, not just from the skaters, from the fans. Yeah, uh, of course. And it's, it's over Christmas, Jonathan, so how horrible for all of us that um, all of our favorites are competing for just two spots. It's going to be... Sad. It's going to be sad. Uh, we, on, yeah, exactly. Um, but on a happier note, I'm really ready for I, Tanya. I've been nervous. I cannot wait. <laughs> so our friend Matthew Coulson is on all of the film message boards, and I believe he had the script, like, bootleg version okay. he knew that nancy only cries in the film there's no actual nancy character okay i believe why is the only word that is said by the nancy kerrigan actress okay and, okay and there's oscar buzz for allison janney with it's like that the performance i really want to see i just hope i really hope because every time someone does their token nancy tanya story they skip they gloss over so much of the skating mm-hmm. right and I actually was a really big fan of Tanya skating, albeit as like controversial as it was. But like, I hope that they like give enough magnitude to like the actual talent and career, yes. and not just the soap opera like trailer park element of her story. And also, I like that they are showing that her life is complicated. And though what Tanya is alleged to have done is very bad, you also have to look back at her upbringing and know that. But- Skaters okay. tend to be a little bit younger emotionally than their age. They're yeah. not exactly living in the real world, although we want to say, you know, she's an adult, she made her own decisions, and that's very true. You, there's right. a lot of caveats here, and there's a lot of nuance and a lot of layers, and hopefully uh, the film will go into that. I mean, it, it seems to be good. I think, you know, if you watch any of the, the real documentary that that Yale student did where all the footage comes from of the mother right. with the, para, on the, right. the parakeet right. on their shoulder... And if you really watch, I mean, again, you talk about trying to put Gracie into something that she wasn't. I mean, it was kind of heartbreaking yeah. when they're trying to put 
Tanya in, you know, dresses to go to the banquet at Skate America to impress the judges, and right. she looks like a fish out of water. And, yeah, and, yeah, exactly. It's something, she I mean, if you have an off. afternoon, I really recommend it. They show her doing the figures. I mean, I'm talking about, like, the 50-minute version. It's really slow. Okay. <laughs> That girl has gotten more probably money out of that student film to be used on 2020 and ESPN. Like little did she know. Yeah. Little did she, Tanya <laughs> is the gift that keeps on giving and skating. Yeah. Also, true. I hope that it comes out before the Olympics because you know that the figure skating establishment, even though we've forgiven Mike Tyson, I believe he was allowed to box again. I'm told no one was ever willing to forgive Tanya. Mm -hmm. on any stretch I mean we know that US figure skating is not into the Christian forgiveness of the 777 <laughs> times so right. <laughs> uh, it'll be really interesting to hear how the skaters are asked about the film and right. how many of them try to dodge the question and who has the most awkward Jeremy Re Abbott response into this <laughs> yes <I mean. laughs> No, you know what will happen is they're all going to be given, like, a quote to give, and they yes. will all say the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Except for, like, Adam, Ashley, and Mirai, who will... Uh... That's right. <laughs> probably several people, this is how old we are, probably several people that'll be like, I'm not really familiar with her. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't around for Tanya. I don't know her. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> she did a triple axel. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. But, um... Let's get into the actual skating because there was quite a lot this weekend. There and was, but it rains, it pours, right? Yes. I was like, if it spreads us out, that'd be great. But I all know. right, we were really grasping at some straws for a while. There was not a lot going on, and exactly. and then all of these music choices that went by the wayside, and we just brought them all back. All of the old ones. It's 2016 again. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes Ashley's doing Moulin Rouge. For the 300th time. <laughs> but we've never seen it with brown hair, so it's going to be very different. Okay, and then no. people were saying, well, Ashley's not doing the senior bees. But then I was thinking, it's not like she's doing any new footwork. You know, she's right. not doing any new spin positions. I mean, likely. She's prepared this program literally for the past two seasons. <laughs> she's <laughs> ready, you know. The thing is, is at least Jenny and Todd, they, they actually performed a new program one time the Olympic year before bringing back Nessun Dorma. <clears throat> right. Exactly. You know, but they too changed the dress. So the important thing is that you have to change the costume, you know? And that, oh, uh, yeah, it's a completely new program. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to someone like Paul Wiley, who would do the same program to different soundtracks. Right. But would change the monochrome costume from time to time. So we're right. going to have to talk to Jason Brown about that, because you know, this is... <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. <laughs> all right, Jonathan, where to start? The good, the bad, the ugly. Um, of which I, there was all. Yeah, all of those things. Then let's start with the pairs. You know what? That just seems like... Uh, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. You're talking about Lombardia or you're talking about Saint Salt Lake? Well, where to begin? Um, yeah. Let's start in Salt Lake. We had <laughs> uh, the Ice Network started the season with a bang... You know, first event of the season, the skating fans were ready on Thursday, logging into their computers, and shocker, Ice Network didn't work. I mean, at this point, when you don't work for the first event of the season, it's you're, not just, you're not caring. I mean, you know how this is going to go. This is, this is a Tanya Harding level of equipment failure that's going on here. You, you, know, you know which way this long program is going. But, um, all right. We see um, the Kinerums did not do Chaplin. They brought back Ghost. Mm -hmm. Jonathan. <laughs> now that she's healthy, I believe uh -huh. that they got a pass for this program last year. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the positives. The dress was the most, the, the prettiest things Alexa has ever worn. Mm -hmm. the, the twist, gorgeous. Oh twist, my gosh. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Program schmaltzy as hell. I have to be honest. I. Yep. Schmaltzy still means like indulgent and into the music. This didn't even do that for me. You know, like like you were saying last season, I think we were like, well, they had no time. Yeah. You know, to prepare it. So maybe we're not seeing it. But um, I'd rather see them bring back Elizabeth, whatever that program was called yes. for, um, than this one. Well, but I like that Alexa had, when we really fell in love with Alexa, she had some grit to her. 
And that was what we really liked. We kind of liked her embracing her rough around the edges side when they did Absolutely. the cover of Metallica and when they did that Elizabeth the Golden Age program. There was some grit to her, some excitement, and now they're just like another blonde girl, another married couple. Right. We love each other. Also, Jonathan, I don't know if you do this before you get on stage, but when there's excessive hugging and like a, it'll be okay, that yeah. doesn't inspire confidence for me, the viewer, perhaps for the judges. I'm like, I'm preparing for this to be a really rough go. I'm imagining the warm up was not a good one. Right. Um, and that we're really going to be marking some of these jumps, which they did in the program. I, that was... I don't, I don't mean to be uh, rude, but it was Alexa who was ill. So I thought maybe Chris could have taken that time to really solidify his jumps. I just, at this juncture, like, however many years later, like, it's still the same issues. Mm -hmm. And it's too bad because, like, when they open with that twist, it's like an attention-getting move. Like, you're, you're looking at it like it could be a world-class pair. Mm -hmm. And then, inevitably, every jump fails them in some way, shape, or form. And I just don't know, at this juncture, with all the resources available to them, how are you finally going to fix that? Like... I just don't understand, like, in comparing them, like, all their scores to Kristen Moore Towers, mm -hmm. like, they're losing, uh, like, silly values, you know, s silly levels, um, and, again, Chris not being able to do his jumps, this has nothing to do with Alexa being off the ice last season, you like, know? She did pop the sow cow, they, and then they yeah. both just went for the double toes, which, yeah. that was tough to watch because... So they didn't do the triples at Champs Camp. We had reports of that they kind of either made mistakes or left them out, which you're allowed mm -hmm. to leave out elements at the Champs Camp because they don't want you to peak too early. And right. Again, altitude, not really an excuse for these two who train at altitudes. You have train to at take, altitude. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing about a couple of them, yeah. Um, I mean, most of the skaters here trained at altitude, the ones that choose to go to Salt Lake. It's also not a far plane ride. It's, you know, right. it's... Uh, um, I think that she looks great from the neck up. Again, they stopped the ballet training, obviously. When she was off the ice, we never got the finished look. Everyone says, you know, they're going to the Olympics, they're going to the Olympics, they're our pair. I think that it's questionable for me at this point. I think that they're obviously the leaders for that spot. Um, yeah. I mean, the interesting thing, and we can just, like, go into depth, depending on how yes. we go with things, but, like, uh, yes, the door is open. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I mean, they still have the best overall aesthetic to me. Yes, the aesthetic is is the most pleasing overall. But um, the door is open, but no, everyone seems to be not interested in walking through it. Like even even this was a huge opportunity for um, Kane and Leduc to do something in Italy, and for uh, Nate and Diana to do something here, and um, Demi and Fr like. But no one's rising to the occasion. The door is completely open. If someone came here and made a really strong case, mm -hmm. the whole thing could have shifted. But no one took advantage of that opportunity. So we're both kind of those competitive, nasty queens who would claw our way to the top. And yes. the thing is, is that remember we were really over it by the end of last season and talking about how yeah. people should spend time with Nina Mosier. You're right. We sent Kane and LeDuc to them. Why didn't Alexa and Chris go as well? That is a kicker for me because this is a team that could really benefit. They're knocking on the door of moving up in the world. They're, they have a lot of the skills. If Delilah is going to be our top pair coach, I believe that maybe we could enlist outside help. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't uh, understand why it wouldn't. Now my question is, oh, okay, by the you, way, yeah. have a little tidbit. So when some skaters were sent to Christopher Dean to work on programs, allegedly he was saying, why do you send me skaters that can only do three turns, crossovers, and mohawks? Oh. I can't do anything when they can't skate. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, the key is we need to send them to someone first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> skating okay. skills are important, Jonathan. I mean, we U.S. Figure Skating needs we, we they need to jump on it at the low level. Um, <laughs> oh, I 
so Alexa and Chris, I mean, keep the dress. I mean, the program is fine. They'll get enough fluff, a nice fluff piece out of being married. Maybe right. she'll finally say what her illness was. Right. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Besides just like alluding to it and drawing attention to it and having surgery anniversaries on social media. Um, but I, I think that it's... Yeah, I mean, the I door's think... open. The door's open, and people are trying. You see, like Deanna, they like they're trying that throw quad. They're trying the Lutzes, but they're just. I mean, Jim I... Peterson is, again, one of those queens that would claw their way to the top. So yeah. you have to, and he is known for pulling surprises at nationals with teams that are not good. Now, Deanna and Nate, that was a horror show in the free skate, and they weren't even really speaking when they got off the ice and um, I, I don't think they could really, I don't know which one could be mad at the other. They just looked like they were just disappointed in general. Uh, uh, and it was an interesting. I think they, they could have made a statement here. This could have been a big move for somebody. This would have been the event to mic the kiss and cry to really hear, um, you know, like a nineties broadcast where they would mic the coaches, especially like basketball yeah. games, gymnastics. And then, well, a couple I, of continents, they, they had the mic on the Kiss and Cry, and we got great moments on those. This yeah. would have been, because I texted Kirsten Moore Towers after she skated, and she said that she forgot the steps. Because um, <laughs> I, 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 like, I said, you were... the lift, to me. <laughs> okay. I was like, you were talking more than Megan and the Kiss and Cry. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was... Um, a moment uh, for them. I think that apparently they had a really great summer. They looked strong. In competition, it hasn't translated yet, and I, I think it's one of those things where they look better, but they were skating at practicing at a level higher than what we saw here. At a, okay. And I think to make that Canadian team, they're going to have to step it up. I think. Look, they did the double axle half loop sows in the program. Uh, at least they did the elements. It was messy as all get out, but there were things there that... For it. Yeah, yeah. Got a... yeah. And now it's it's time. Um, yeah. It still looks like she's coaching him through the program three years later to me. I just I just don't now, think... Now, there's a bit of this about uh, also well, a great deal in Lombardia, but where it was just kind of felt like two single skaters. Mm-hmm. A lot didn't feel too, and that's what Chris and Alexa do have, is there is a sense of, like, a pair team going on there. But even with with Kristen and Michael, it's like... Kirsten. She Kirsten, will, she Kirsten will, sorry. Will, yes. Sorry. Get a gold next time, and then I'll remember. <laughs> just, they did get the gold. Oh, they were second in the free. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, win the free next time. No. <laughs> yes. Um, the thing is, uh, oftentimes I felt like they were just two people out there. Mm-hmm. And, and it just, it wasn't quite gelling mm-hmm. for me. And my, I'm very interested to see who makes that Olympic team in Canada. Because the other big question mark, I think it depends on Julia and Charlie's health. Yes. Because I think, I almost think they're the number two team in Canada. They've been the number two. They've been, you could think about them being the number three because the judges love Luba. I mean, they fall oh. for it hook, line, and sinker. I mean, Tracy Wilson was saying that they are that they had a great artistic season on the Grand Prix, which was her way of saying they didn't land any of their jumps. Uh, (laughs) Everything but the jumps. Okay. I mean, I don't know how Canada's spinning that, but yeah, I mean, I think Kirsten has the experience. There is a confidence to her. Mm -hmm. She does look very strong, but then there are, you know, points in the program. I think that they have a good base to start with. I mean, Mm -hmm. the top two teams, them, Alexa and Chris, Kirsten... They're going into the Grand Prix prepared. I mean, mostly, yeah. you know, at this point, this is the earliest of the senior Bs. There is time to get ready. This is obviously much, both of them had a really rough go last season. Kirsten had the concussions that would not um, get better. So, um, yeah, I think that it, it'll be good. I mean, for the rest of these pairs, Jonathan, it was a rough go. I mean, Hayden yeah. and Brandon really? and... I, I saw, don't. I don't see that happening. I don't, I don't think she, she's going to last physically. Yeah, she looks. Yeah, and seeing Marissa and Mervin last week, I mean the the jumps weren't any closer to being landed. And well, I would think the motivation for them, you know, mm-hmm. knowing even if they did win, they couldn't go, you know, to the Olympics logistically. But yeah, it would be a motivator to, to keep going. This. But at a certain point, 
when you only have two jumps to do, it's hard to feel as sympathetic to some of the, especially when they've done the same elements year after year after year. When someone's doing right. different elements, you understand the mistakes. You, and when you don't see the progress from year to year and you have selection criteria, I'm less inclined to give you the benefit of the doubt over time. Yeah, and that's my thing sort of about crits, is it's mm -hmm. just we're, we're still dealing with the same things. Mm -hmm. So if you don't change anything, how is something going to change? I don't, yeah. Yeah, so that's tricky for me. Yeah, I, I, I assume they had a bad warm up when there was a lot of talking before the program. Consulting before, yeah. Yeah, I they, thought that that was strange. Uh, I just, yeah, okay. <laughs> that doesn't send the message that I want to give out. Kane and LaDuke. Now, this is interesting because they trained with Nina Mosier over the summer. We saw Tim LaDuke and the other four boys wakeboarding yeah. on the bus. It was a nice photo up. Yeah. yeah. So, and after working with Nina Mosier, they went to Champs Camp. And, you know, the Russians don't train full programs. Mm -hmm. So, apparently, when they had to do the program at Champs Camp, it was a disaster. It was the element because they had to put them all together. I have yeah, to I assume that it did not go well for them there. I thought that some of their actual elements looked stronger here. The technique looked better. They don't do the same I, After that report from Jam's Camp, I was yeah. expecting kind of a hot mess in Lombardia. And um, there's weird YouTube blocks in Canada. So I can only see certain things. So I was unable to see their free, but I saw their short. So you and, saw the better of the programs. Okay, yeah, because I was like, these they're going for things. The thing about them is, I was like, okay, you're doing the throw lots, you're doing, you know, all these like different sorts of things. Um, what's tricky for me is he has such great extension, right? Yeah. But, but when they do these moves independently, they look nice, but together they're not quite working. Yeah. You know, it looks like some opening of a show where all the single skaters are doing the choreography, you know, they had to learn that afternoon or whatever. So there's just like an ensemble thing. My other question to you is, okay, yes, we sent them to need emotion. Mm -hmm. right. Let's see what she can do with them. And they're they're spending more time with her before oh, their okay. next event. Okay, so this is my question because these are things where we're not talking about like a week seminar right. that can really do something, right? Like months. Give we're talking great. months and months and frequent yeah, consulting. Yeah, commitment. Yeah, in order to really see a change, mm -hmm. I would think. But okay, I'm glad to hear that they're going to continue that. And at a certain point, they always have the height issue. I mean, they're mm -hmm. always going to struggle with that. He's gotten very physically buff. I know. Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see. I thought that they looked cleaner in some parts. At the, and then at the end of their program, they have this, they have actual choreography in their short program, which we don't usually see from many of the pairs. And yeah. towards the end, the short program footwork is intricate and a lot of upper and lower body movements. But you think, this looks sloppy. The two of them look nice. Again, it doesn't quite match. Yeah, individually, if I've watched each one doing that, the choreography individually, I'd be like, oh, nice. They, they've got some nice moves there. But together, it's just not quite gelling. The levels are different. The extensions are different. And it's almost like a curse because they both do have the extension and they try to showcase it. It has yeah. to match. And it's that's going to be the difference in the levels as they move forward. They're still very new. Right. Um, I didn't hate the free skate to the Great Gatsby as much as I've hated other Great Gatsby programs. Still, right. the skaters feel the need to put every piece of music in the programs. Uh, it, some of the edits were not the best, um, but I, I think overall she makes a great 20s flapper girl. There's a lot of um, just brightness to her. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny, you talk, you, know, you talk about them not matching. The biggest cringe for me is when they do the Y spins at the end. I mean, talk about taking yeah. a risk and show, and they're always just like wildly off. And of course, how could they not be? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's it's a but it needs to be like that um, Masvina approach where she's like, let him do that. Yes, and you do something else around him or something like create the asymmetry. You know, this is maybe where we, maybe save it for the new artistic program that we're going to have when we have a technical champion and an artistic champion. That's this right. is. Yeah. yeah, this mm -hmm. is not their area. Um, I actually don't hate that as much as other people, but we can discuss that uh, okay. later. <laughs> yeah, okay. Something needs to change. Um, but I think um, overall it was, I saw some promise there. When, there. when she is winded, she is Bambi on the throws, though. I mean, there's just not a prayer. Um, yeah. And I think it'll be interesting to see with more time and more programs if, you know, when they get ready for the Grand Prix, they're still a new team there is something to them they have 
potential. They have promise. They're doing more difficult jumps. They're both actually attempting triples. There is, then they've made improvements even in the twist from last year. I was going to say, it was one of those twists I thought was never going to happen, or mm -hmm. and certainly would never get the levels, mm -hmm. and or the, the positive GOE. Yeah. And then sure enough, this time I was like, oh, sure enough, it is getting better. I, I thought there were a couple of like, you know, just physical restrictions on the team. And I was like, well, maybe there's more potential than we thought. Yeah, I think we have to give some credit for the Canes. I mean, they made a good decision, teaming up with Mojo, learning from her, and making it work. They also have an interesting transition into the Death Spiral, which is one of the features this year. I think mm. it, they could be a team that sneaks up on Alexa and Chris and has a moment. And there's someone that the USFS likes. I mean, they were at the World Championships, ready to step in uh, last year. They're obviously someone that they've really invested in. So that's kind of one of the storylines. But I think one of the most interesting storylines this year is going to be which of the men are sent to the Olympics because we have the jumpers, we have the artists, and we have Nathan. As long right. as Nathan <laughs> is healthy and in one piece, I think it's safe to say he's going to the Olympic Games. He's in the commercials coming up. Uh, he's been in the magazines. He is a, the poster. an yeah. immense talent. And then you have Adam, Jason, you have Vincent, who's the reigning world junior champion with a ton of quads, and you uh -huh. have Max Aaron, who many people would have counted out and certainly is not on the top of my list, but after watching him... A strong case. He's he, someone who took the opportunity to make a case for themselves here. Yeah. yeah. And, and, he's, then, and Lord knows whatever Josh is, <laughs> where he is. Or he, where he's I do, you know, he was in a champs camp. I don't think I, it's happening for I, Josh. And there's always Grant and a number of other names that kind of circle around, but I think those are kind of the five ones that I would really kind of look yeah. at. And how they do, you have to think, is even now they're building their resume for the end of the season and mm -hmm. watch the USFS. We'll just go with the top three. But in my right. mind, I'm really looking at, you know, who should we send? Jason Brown, with all of his crowd appeal, he's a good competitor with what he does. You know, the, what he does, he does do very consistently. And his free skate at Lombardia, I think in, in person, it w is one of those things that's probably spellbinding. That he is someone that I okay. don't think. Uh, I have to say, he he spins a we you know he spins a web when mm -hmm. you see it in person. It yeah. doesn't always translate on camera. But, and this was one because I left watching it like okay, that's like exactly what I guessed a Jason Free program at this juncture would have been. I mean, the but costume you, was the same as yeah. last year. The music was very similar. Yeah, it's nice. Just very generically cool. lovely, you know. I mean, it's, it was, I mean, generically, Jason Lovely. I, I don't even know what that is. So that's, you know, it's yeah. uh, you know, hard to put into words. I mean, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of it before. There were some very nice moments that he did. He so, had some new... Beautiful extension and posture and position. There was a back bend that he hit on the music and mm -hmm. lovely. We have to talk about the elements with Jason. Yeah. Looking at Corey A's face in the kiss and cry after the short looked like she was fearing the worst of what was about to come. I have to say, because I didn't think that, I don't think the caller at the U.S. Classic would have been as kind to Jason uh, in the short program. In the free, I didn't really see many problems other than the second axle, but right. he, and he really got great height on the first axle in the program, but in the short, the quad to me looked like a double under, and yeah. the triple axle was landed with an under as well, and it just looked... And for me, the, the thing that's so distracting right now is, you know how he does that beautiful, like, leg up move? That the Rohini move, it? yes. Yeah. Well, he also does that on the landing of the triple <laughs> axle. <laughs> that, it's just, like, such, like, a Rockettes kind of, like, fan kick every time he's landing it, and it just draws attention. I, it's just so... It's sort of the same thing. I don't understand how... He goes up and down. You know, I understand that, like, Corey defines maybe so much of her success on him and all this sort of stuff, so is afraid to let go. But I wish, you know, it's a large world and there's so much information available to these skaters. I wish he would just go and take advantage of that. It was weird, yeah, because we had heard that when he went to Frank, he showed up in new boots and they worked on spins. Uh, for I mean, let him do what he can do. Yeah. Jason doesn't need help on the spins, you know. I think with Jason, as much as you talk about the, just the loveliness of the free skate, 
I hated that short program. I oh I, oh I I like threw up in my mouth several times. He first of all he showed up with what looked like a Tanya Harding ponytail. <laughs> like, it looked like he had crimped it in the back. Or something we haven't else. seen hair like that since the Soviet gymnast couldn't afford conditioner. Exactly. I mean that that's that look. Literally, that's literally what was happening. Now I feared that it would be a cringy program regardless, yes. right? Just when we heard. So then he came out and I was like, all right, Jonathan, just calm down, you know, it's funky, maybe he'll make it work. Like I would have cringed at the idea of him doing a Prince program, but that Prince short program to me is just still one of the best things ever. Yeah. This, I, I had to look away several times. It was so uncomfortable. I think and they're it, trying to... It's, it's so bad. I think they're trying to force a viral moment you yeah. know, because the last time they had the viral moment, but it happened organically. And this time you try to like star a line. And no. I don't know. There's something about, it's not, I don't know. It's, it you doesn't know that, work for me. Others no. will love it. Others will love it and say that we are nasty, but it was not my cup oh, of see, I, see, it's actually because I like Jason so much. Mm -hmm. That's why I hate it so much. That's like for like a showboater, no substance kind of person needs that kind of music, that kind of gimmick. Like it's gimmicky still, in like a Scott Hamilton way in a, that bad pro still, year. Fine, Jason, if you want to do that, it's a show program. Now knock yourself out. But like, for goodness sake, this is the Olympic season. Like, I'm surprised this made it out of Champs Camp. Like, how did no one see this and be like, uh, this was a miss? You know what? Way to go. You tried it. Mm -hmm. you, you wanted to try it. It was like a neat idea. It didn't work. Let's do something else now. Time to get serious. Yeah, it was not. And the jumps, I think at the quad at this point, would you bag it? Well, I think they still feel like somehow by him going for it puts him in a different category. Mm -hmm. But of course, then are we risking more injury? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how he had it as close as he did at Skate America mm -hmm. last year. Well, he was with Frank, like, right up before I mean, he has done it. We've seen it on Instagram from time to time. It doesn't count to me, but, you know. I mean, like I hear, you no, know, we hear that some days he's great, and some days it's just nowhere near. You know, like, it's hot and cold. And at a certain point, it becomes Todd Eldridge going for the quad. When right. You, me, but, and the Pope but, know that this thing is not being landed. You know, we are, and Phil Hirsch but, is still, like, uh -huh. asking him as he's about to take the ice. Are you going to do it? Yeah. Well, I just wonder if they feel like having it on the paper, you know, that like somehow it's better. Mm -hmm. um, but I would think it's 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 so risky that it'll hurt himself, you know. But not that we think that Adam's quads are that much more based in reality. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Uh, but Max's work here. Yeah, Max. I just, so I think that Max Aaron making a case for himself. Mm -hmm. Technically, he likes show tunes. Um, more of the same, yeah, just more of the same. Like now, now the approach for our artistry is that when he does back crossovers before his jump, he now does a move. <laughs> he did so have some arm movements, yeah. For back crossovers, and he'll go like that or something, and now we have a suddenly an artistic program. Like, we just have to give it up. So it was always this talk of, okay, he's not an artist, he's the athlete. But as the athlete, if you don't land your jumps, now I'm not quite sure what we're left with. So at least now, he's making a case for himself again with these with these jumps. So, And he's gone through his skater angst over the last couple of years where, you know, you're mad at the world and you just miss out on things. But right. get a costume before, uh, at least for the free skate. If you're doing Phantom of the Opera, I... He went the Patrick Chan route where we got a... You know, Patrick Chan was like skating to like subtle music that kind of like, you know, had that casual feel to it. This was like, you're doing like a Broadway show and you're like... His free skate yeah. reminded me of uh, that old adage that the music didn't bother him at all. You know, he was oh, yeah, skating, the music was playing. <laughs> it was... Oh, wait! Dave, I actually wrote this down in my notes because I was laughing so hard. I mean, Phantom is already, like, kind of a funny choice. And then he starts to it um, with, like, the music box opening, like, the little ballerina music was also very funny. Um, okay. In the music of the night, there's literally a moment that he uses where the lyrics say, 
feel it, hear it, as in talking about the music. And I was like, yes, that should be instructional, Max. Please feel it. Please hear it. Like, they're even telling you in the music to do that, and he's not. Now, here's what really got my goat, though. Mm -hmm. His step sequence in that free skate got four points, okay? Nathan's step sequence in the free program, which was like the highlight of the event for mm -hmm. me, was 4.3. And I was like, criminal. I don't know what's happening, but how is Nathan's step sequence only 0.3 more than Max's? That's ridiculous to me. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, there was some there was some fake news scoring going on this weekend, yeah. I believe, and and there's also some revisions for the ISU to do moving forward. Uh, Max, I just. I, I wasn't even, when I finished the short program, I wasn't even sure if he had had a step sequence at a point. I was like, did I sleep through it? I'm not really quite certain if I, if I saw that. I'm not certain if he passed his uh, senior moves, but there was, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. His quads were great. His triple axles were really strong in the free skate. It's He's, kind of the best yeah. of Max. Nothing's really improved, but nothing's... Nothing's but really important. Things declined. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, those West Side Story jumps back in 2000, I don't know what was that. Whatever oh, that was. I'm get to <laughs> you West Side French, Story. That was. 13 or whatever it was. Um, but his jumps were so strong, so there was excitement about it. And then they never seemed as strong as that since. But it seemed like they were on a good path here. And he got the rookie season excitement that we overlooked a lot um, right. at that time. Right. All right. On better notes, we have Nathan Chen skating to Mao's Last Dancer, a Shailen Bourne program. Uh, I thought that was interesting, too, because he didn't go with the Marina program. And last year there was the push and pull with right. Nathan, with, who was the coach. And it looks like they steered him away from Marina right. to try to get her out of the picture in, as much as possible there. All right. What did you make of this? I have to say, as excited as I am for Nathan... Okay. The thing that I don't, and as much as I like the Shay Lindbourne approach, what mm -hmm. I don't like about Marina being front and center is that you have Phil Hirsch and Raphael talking about quad quad combos and seven quad longs. And I'm just right. remembering about how often Alexander Apt was actually injured during his career, right. seeing Nathan get injured at that exhibition and wondering, is he going to make it to the Olympics with the amount of pounding that they're all going to be putting into this. His intensity, Raphael's intensity. Will we see the skating? Because, I mean, you think if he had a hip injury, that would be the, the quad loop would be the one jump you wouldn't attempt. He did one. It was stunning. Um, it, okay. Crazy. I know he was working. I mean, of course he yeah. was working on the quad loop, but I didn't even know that was like in the arsenal. And then it just showed up and I was like, well, oh, -da, there you go. But now, how did he look physically to you? He looked a little cautious at times. A little cautious. They were, like, you know, people were wondering if he is injured or what is the... I just protective. don't know if he wasn't ready because he doesn't train at altitude going there. Mm. He was off balance a little bit in the programs. But I just think, you know, last year he had some up and down moments at the, uh, at the Senior B's. Mm -hmm. He travels with an entourage now. He had the ballet coach and the sports psychologist with him here. There's a lot of hype around him that he's going to get accustomed to. In which case, okay, this could be viewed a lot of different ways. Okay, so he's traveling with a sports psychologist now. Mm -hmm. So um, on the one hand, you have the idea, oh my gosh, is he already freaking out? Is it already a problem? I'm going to choose to be optimistic. I think they're being perfect. guns blazing. Like, I think they're really going after this. I think they're being serious about it. So I actually think it's a really, like, strong move to incorporate whatever it is the and for the record, side. Hanyu has an entourage of seven when he goes to events. So this is yeah. in you line. Have, why wouldn't you give yourself every advantage from the get-go in, in an important season like this? Because they know it's such an important season, I'm going to trust they're going to play it safe. And he it's didn't, a little bit of an intimidation game that they're playing too. Because with him showing that he can do a quad loop and a quad lutz, you have Hanyu who didn't have the quad lutz until we saw it at the end of last season that he was working in. They're mm -hmm. pushing Hanyu out of his comfort zone to be upping right. his technical so that maybe right. he'll make a mistake if the jumps aren't as well. You know, they're trying to push him. But you also right. have Shoma Uno who can do several different quads as well. So it's really going to be anyone's game, I think, 
at the Olympics in terms of who is going to go out and land these quads. And I'm going to say, I mean, people will call me crazy. I, I really enjoyed the free skate of, of Nathan's, and I thought it was beautiful. The step sequence was just killer to me during the ride of spring. I yeah. just a slightly odd choice to just randomly insert the ride of spring. So it's in the soundtrack to Mao's Last Dancer? Oh, oh but, I see that. But because I it's about, I haven't seen the movie, but I, I imagine maybe it's like a performance that they do rather than... Like something I, like in the soundtrack narrative okay. of the event. So, okay. look, he's probably sense. not seen it either. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of spring from Fantasia with the dinosaurs. Yeah. So scary. Okay. Got it. <laughs> but, the, but the step sequence during it was killer. And, you know, in those first few moments of every program, you just give that like opportunity to like let us know are you artistic or not. And so much is decided in those first five seconds. And his extension in those first five seconds, his carriage was really good. It was really impressive. Now, compare that, though, to, like, Shoma's first five seconds on his short, especially, and I'm like... <gasps> I thought Nathan... Nathan had improved until I watched Shoma. I have to say, like, I... And I do yeah, think that Nathan has improved. But it's, it doesn't mean he's at that level. The program is less generic than last year's. It's less off-the-shelf Marina Zueva music that we're watching. There still needs to be more transitions. I mean, they're using spread eagles for everything, but he's moving the head to the music. There was at least an attempt to be musical... He was it's listening. Not, it's not at the same level yeah. of Shoma Uno. Right. He might not disguise it as well as Han Yu does when he's setting up for quads, but that's something that I think we'll have to watch going forward. Let's talk about Shoma Uno because he did something that we haven't really seen for Sasha Cohen that excited me at such a level, Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> he changes the spin positions to the music. It actually matches in the spin. He hits the arm at the right time for the little nuance that like no one cares besides it's us. Fresh, and the hand came down in, yes. the, in the small of the combo spin in the short. I was like, this is just all the points, all the points. But I'm telling you, even in those first few seconds when he like rolls his shoulders back like this and it is so exquisite and so just stretched and with intention, it's just incredible. He and the is the best dancer of the men, as you said before, that you said a lot last season. And you could really see it in the short. I think one of the other things that doesn't quite come out on the screen uh, with Shoma is his patterns is that he hits really deep edges and he has some very deep, dynamic uh, just patterns. And this is something that when we talk about Hawaii and Baker that they need to really take lessons from is when you're shorter, you have to make everything look bigger. And Shoma yeah. Uno is so, he has so much machismo in such a tiny little body that is just right. bursting out when he is skating yeah. and it's so exciting. And that's where he really just adds up the points, I think, time after time after time. And he every, skates, it's all wide, it's all long. It's just, it, it takes up a lot of space. Yeah. No, so he's of a smaller stature. The odds yeah. are so easy for him when he does them. The landings are always a little bit touch and go <laughs> yeah. and I, I asked Alex Arashev about it and he you know he was talking about how he's bow-legged and you know I don't think that that's all of it because we certainly saw Midori Ito was bow-legged so you don't know how it all adds up to what's going on you know with some of the technique of how he lands it I think some of the edges the curves he's going on as well right. are interesting um, for that but he certainly could be the dark horse of the Olympic Games there's obviously going to be so much attention on Hanyu so much attention right. on Javier, Nathan Chen, but he's someone that I just wouldn't count out. Uh, oh, certainly for the medal podium, but I think he's definitely got a world title in his future. Jumps are so calm. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this with Nathan as well. They were very calm approaches, even compared to their own quads last season, both mm -hmm. of which were very good. But there's like, there was like a sense of center and like zen going into each jump that I really appreciated. It made me relax. So then when they do these like amazing physical feats, like it just seemed more elegant. Yeah. I, I really did. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I didn't mind that he went back to uh, the old program. I think it worked very well. well they got better upgrade. They changed, they changed yes. a little bit of recording at the end. So they I think did. The, and the, the squat was in the, at a different point and it was, yeah. I, okay. That's the other thing. Now, you know, I adore Shoma and I think mm -hmm. he just can do no wrong. Um, the cantilever thing is getting a little old for me. In the short program, it just felt a little bit like arbitrary. Yeah, because um, it's rushed in the short too. You're really cramming it in. The short I is not some long. Have to do this. And I said, like, you don't have to do that. But that's my only criticism. It's like that the Scott Hamilton backflip when you're waiting for it. You yeah. know it's coming. 
<laughs> Whether it should be there or not. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, like he's doing some like big touching tribute to like the plane crash of nineteen sixty one and then we have the backflip at the end of Amazing Grace. Yeah, like, maybe that's, not still. Yeah. Maybe leave it out this time. Um Okay. Yeah. Moving on to the ice dance. Mm-hmm. Our team, Hubble and Donahue, last season ended tragically for them. It really seems to have gotten them into gear. I mean, they their back's up against the wall. They've always wanted to move up. There's always a lot of talk that in the U.S. it's really hard for them to move up. Their coach isn't from the U.S. They don't have those long relationships. But last season, they really had a lot of opportunities, and they didn't step through the door. Only about a hundred. <laughs> I mean, there were about four free free dances where they had major, major errors, and it seems yeah. like the confidence. All different. Yes. All different. Yeah. It certainly seems like the training is there. It seems like they are prepared for this coming season. What did you think of the actual material? So we had first heard that they were skating to this last spring. Been waiting for it. I was listening to it on my iPod all summer. What did you make of this kind of sexy, 80s, bluesy, sultry-sounding performance that Madison and Zach were giving us? Um, I liked it. I mean, I like them. I love Marie France. Like, all these things are, like, lining up. For an Olympic year, it was slightly subtle. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, last last Olympics that fight between third and fourth, between the Russians and the French, the French were subtle and they were smart and they were elegant and the Russians were a little more in your face and obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though I enjoy the subtlety, I worry about the choice for being this subtle uh, for an Olympic year free dance. But they do it beautifully, the lifts are incredible. Mm-hmm. I, loved, I loved the short dance. I, I really, really liked the material. I just wonder if subtle was the way to go, but I'll enjoy watching it each time. I think the important thing is that they were clean here. They got a much better score than they've started out with in the past. They looked confident. Apparently, Zach weighs the same, but his body composition has completely changed since last year. I mean, oh, he... It's out on Instagram. Everything is working out. Yeah, <laughs> he's been working out a lot and sh- showing okay. it off. Uh <laughs> and that girlfriend of his shows it off too. Um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think, you know what? They have something. They've seemed to up their game. She seems to be really leading the show. And he seems to, I think I the like world that. got him yeah. in line. I wouldn't want to have crossed Marie France after that short, short dance was lined up to finally right. pass the other U.S. teams. You have to wonder if it's more of a strategic move nationally, what they're doing. Because... They're competing against the Shibutanis who are going to give us cold play. They're obviously not going to give us sex. They're obviously not going to give us chemistry. And then right. they're against Chalk and Bates, which has always been kind of a sure. one-sided sure. chemistry yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. And they're skating to Imagine, which if you've ever watched American Idol or any, it's just such a cringe. Uh, for me, that's one of those pieces of music that's unforgivable. Um, but I hear it is the best possible of the edits. So, but I think... And it's land. Yeah, I, that was the thing about La La Land. Is as much as I hated it for Ashley and Madison, I think we should give it to Mariah Bell. I think it could work for her. She's a young ingenue. She doesn't seem like the most complex, artistic, violinist type. I think that it could really work for her. She could be an Emma Stone, and we're going to get to that program. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, okay, are we ready? Because I, I can say plenty. You okay. know what, let's just go to it. Hawaii can bake or skate bigger like Shoma. All right, it just, you know what, I don't care that you kept the free dance. You fell a million times in the last two seasons. Anyway, get into it, Mariah Bell. Uh, Jonathan, I, 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 we okay. like Mariah Bell. She seems like a nice girl. She has lovely qualities. I she's hate... a factor for me. I'm sorry. She's a non-factor. Like, I, uh, she's a non-factor. She's There's not a computer or a fifth funny. place with her name all over it this season. Yeah. And it is... I don't give a medal for fifth. So. Don't even get a medal for fifth. I know. Yeah. It's... And it's coming, and you can see it in slow motion. And that's... Literally, because it often looks like she's skating in slow motion. All right. <laughs> uh, so the I think for... that the short yeah. was the wrong program to keep from last year. Not that I loved either one of them. Uh, the short, to me, has always looked frantic. She's someone with long limbs that doesn't always look like to know where to put them. The skating skills aren't as strong as they really need to be. And to me, right. I always felt like the short, da- the short program really 
didn't disguise her weaknesses well. And it was always, she was always in the 50s. And the scores for much of last season are the very low 60s. And it was not the strong program. And I think, you know, you say frantic and the way I interpreted that is like, um, the program is skating her. Yes. <laughs> she's, like, she's like holding on to like a program that's like running away from her. Yeah. So um, it was... Jonathan, yeah. it was a mess. It was a mess. It's a mess. It's, she looks great in the dress, okay? She looks great yeah. in the dress. It's fun. We've seen Chicago, Sing, 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 everything that type a million times. Yeah. It wasn't the program to keep. I don't think that it matures her. I don't think that it helps her case. Yeah. It, and, it's not a fit. And, and then if she the, can't land the triple triple in the short, it just. She landed the fall it in the was like, with the music, but okay. <laughs> um, but, and then the West Side Story was a real miss. Also. All right. So I don't think I don't know who did this program. For the, I don't think it was Rohin, uh who did. It didn't look like Rohin. Um No. All right. I just I hated everything about this West Side Story except for the dress once again, and the opening triple X triple toe. I don't know because of this, it almost looked like she was hunched a little bit. But also, she just could have been hunched a little bit during that program. Jonathan, I was trying to give a positive, okay? He really didn't have to attack the dress when I was really trying to start with, you know. Okay, sorry. Please, please. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to a regionals or a really long um, skating competition where you see all a, a myriad of talent and ability and preparation and okay. aesthetic and, and income and, you know, access to things. But this, to me wound up with one of those girls who you wish would get off the ice and just it is karen walker one said skate faster we have reservations when someone is skating to west side story okay. it feels dated for like 30 years dated um you know yeah. katarina vitt yeah. did it very well in 87 and it was borderline dated at that time um yeah also a west side story again like four or five pieces of music we have to hit every scene in the movie um except once that she should have done like i'd rather see her do like i want to live in america or something like she needed she needs pep and like charm and bubble and i just it wasn't, wasn't i think i really started to hate it at the footwork I, sequence I want to know, what, what was Raphael saying in that kid cry because his body language was amazing and that's when you're like somebody give him a microphone <laughs> we need to mic him like bella caroli i mean all I okay. thought when, when she got off the ice is when he said, that was no good, Dominique, that was no good. When Bella said that. I mean, that was that, was that performance. I'll like this, and I feel like Roth is doing the same. That yeah. performance, okay. So, if you're going to skate to a generic program that... When they do Somewhere, who was singing that, Jonathan? That was in Barbara, that was in... Like there's so many good, like, cast recordings of that, and... Uh, Way to go that you found, like, the only non-good one. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I know you're not a big gymnastics person, but did you know Kristen Maloney? I know the name. I'm so sorry. she was a gymnast that everyone hated, and there was a girl that was, like, a, a lovely Sasha Cohen-type mess that was behind her okay. that was the real talent that could never keep it together. And okay. she was the one that would win everything, like Rachel Flatt, and, you know, she conjured up the same kind of emotions. Um, okay. She did a horrific floor routine to West Side Story where we hit every single piece of music, like Mariah Bell. Um, and again, the program again skated her this here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just ditch it. Ditch it. Ditch it. We'll forget right. that it happened. Well, we, you know, we'll we'll forgive it. You know, it, like that Evan Grease program. It just went away. We never saw it again. And I don't... and that's fine. So yeah. the Japanese girl Kaori Sakamoto, who's skating to Amelie mm -hmm. in dark olive green, mm -hmm. not the color I associate with the film. Correct. <laughs> I think she's a Kyoko Ina type that needs like a really artistic boy to kind of make her more interesting for Help us it. because Help I just think she is not meant to be a solo star. I think that's just she's a great technician. She has wonderful skating skills. She just doesn't have it. And those Adea skates don't make you look any less clunky. You know, they just they're they don't um, It looks heavy, don't yeah. they? Like being weighed down. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's kind of all I have to say about her. She's lovely. Not going yeah. to make the Japanese Olympic team. Very right. nice skater. There's too, there's too many good ones that are already going to lose out on that team. So, Would probably yeah. be a fantastic coach. How, like, the top skaters never... Right. 
I would put her in pairs if they cared about such a discipline and didn't need to, like, import white people to skate with them to, like, find someone to do this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that, you know, Japan could win the team event if they found her, like, a nice partner. So... Great. Maybe Daisuke maybe Murakami or something. You know, maybe we've just solved their crisis. <laughs> Look, in American pair standards, if we gave her a partner, they'd be national champions by nationals. So I oh, think... That, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And by a long shot. <laughs> okay. Look, she could skate for the U.S. in pairs. We'd send her to our team event. All right, yeah, so... moving on. Did you uh-huh. see Paige Ryberg's performance? That was pretty tough and made me sad that um, many other women we could have sent were not sent. I'm, how I'm did unsure. she get the assignment? I, I don't know how she was assigned this particular event, but it, like in a Laura Ashley comforter of a dress for the short program. She was literally the skater that I chose to go to the bathroom during last year because you know when you have to time it when you're getting ready for the last warm up. I mean, you just knew That's nothing was going to happen. I, Jonathan. And it looks like Tom hasn't paid any attention to her because he's coaching Vincent, he's coaching Camden, he's coaching Mariah's Triple Axel. He has, right. like, zero of his mental energy is going to be helping this girl, and it showed. I don't get why she moved to him. This was not... Well, why are there not, like, an entourage of, like, assistants that can help? Like, I Have I you don't met know. Tom's assistants? Yeah, no, I have not, so... The woman in the Western jacket? I mean, okay. this is why they skate like they do. You know, she's... Uh, yeah. It just seemed unattended to yeah unattended to let's yeah. that was not something that we should have sent out to an international event i just don't when other people really could have benefited from it or made yeah. a better show but yeah. you know what i like is that these new reaction videos jonathan i would like you to bomb a performance in the opera like horrifically bad awful your mariah bell had like your te- your eyes are like red and mm-hmm. you like get off and you're like you know it wasn't what I wanted, but I really learned a lot today. And you're thinking, like, you've had 20 seconds to process. What have you possibly learned? What What have no, you learned? I would like a follow-up question. You know, yeah. like, what did okay. you learn from this? Like, Well, do you remember, like, you need that reaction, like, Kurt Browning after the 94 short program. <laughs> Every bomb the short program at his second Olympics. And they're like, what are you, gonna, what are you thinking? And he's like, I'm just going to go home and cry a lot and figure out why the Olympics hate me so much. Yes. <laughs> And I was like, thank you for your honesty, because that's real, and I identify with you, and like, don't tell me about a life lesson about something you did five seconds ago. Marai was refreshingly real. Yes. But and all she's the rest- kind of the one that gets that, like, these people are stupid, and that they're not talented at their jobs. I mean, this is... Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. This is like college intern, like, <laughs> level press materials that are coming up. No one in the press moves to Colorado Springs because they have talent. I'm just exactly. putting that out there. Um, <laughs> Let's, okay. Moving on. Mirai landed the triple axel. Mm-hmm. Who knew that they credited her in the short? That was generous. Um, yeah. Um, they made up for it because I thought in Milan, some of them were kind of... I thought that the triple triple was around. I thought so too. And I thought the sow was around too. Now, for sure, the, the double axel sequence was yeah. like all a, all a whack. But I, I was surprised at what was being dinged and what was not being dinged. Sorry. Okay, so I know that you probably don't like Leah Salonga and that she's probably 90s cheese to you, but I don't think, I don't think skating is any better than that, like, right? Like, I don't think that skating as an art form is above that, right? Correct, is above that. Yeah, I think that she would be a fine addition. Why do we pick the most boring edits to... I mean, I at least thought that if all of the awful skating war horses, you give the Asian girl... Miss Saigon, obviously, especially when you have, like, the white pair partner. Why have we not updated, like, that one edit that we just pass around? Is it that Sam Schwinard has only edited it once and we just yeah, purchase it, it from is him? Yeah, it's just laziness because it already exists or... I, I'm not, And it's they don't have to think about the timings or something. But the thing is, like, you know, Mariah does her jumps when she kind of... She does her best jumping when she almost disconnects yes. from the program, right? Like, at Four Continents last year... She kind of disconnected. She dissociates from her body. Yeah, in order to do those mm-hmm. jumps. Okay, so if we have to face that as the reality of the situation, if you're going to get through the technical content and you're going to get your jumps the most around, if you just completely disassociate from the program, mm-hmm. at least give us... Good music. Leah Salonga's well, voice. Well, I'm singing it because Leah is emoting. So then we'll get a little confused and hear Leah emoting and think you're emoting more than you are than if it's just a blank instrumental canvas and we feel like something is lacking. So if she lands the triple axel 
at least on the Grand Prix, I don't think Mariah Bell has really a prayer of going to the Olympics. I mean, they're just going to have to send her. I mean, this is just... Come on. I mean... It's a whole story. It's going to be a whole flipping story, you know. I mean, the bad part about when you land the triple axel is that they're going to ask you where it is until the end of time. I mean, Kimmy Meisner, I mean, luckily this is probably the last season of Mariah's career. She doesn't have to deal with this for that much longer. But it's going to fill her. She's going to be following you down the hall, down the bathroom, asking where this jump is. She could be going to her grave and he's going to be like, where is the triple axel? So, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So I at least think, you know, I'd give my life for you last night of the world, somewhere around when that piano music and she looks bored going into the jumps and is like, I have to do a fake Ina Bauer and then I'm moving in because it gets robotic towards the end. I mean, we really like Mariah's personality off the ice and remember her personality in like 2008. And we're Mm -hmm. still giving her bonus points for that. And she's a sentimental favorite. We need something more because the face is not, the face is just not happening. Yeah. But see, the interesting thing is when she did that four continents program last year and she disassociated but was able to land everything, but then she still skated out at the end. Yes. So it's like the Michelle Kwan focus through the program in 2002, give us the footwork sequence and we forgive everything. So I think if we at least, if she did that, if they arranged the program and you gave us like Leah Salonga during the last minute, and she's spinning, and she's doing that layback. Uh, where we we leave with that big up feeling, yeah, yes. yeah. This is, I think, we need to be strategic with Mariah. I mean, we have, we have to manipulate an audience a little bit, and and that's actually, you know, everyone talks about Jason's viral moment with Riverdance. You know, since then he's given very sensitive programs that are far more impressive than Riverdance, but because that music starts to create a drive, it just manipulates the audience into jumping up. Uh, yes. you know, up their seats. And she could have that, but she's not a human. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Buttle, what were you doing? I mean, usually we love you, but we have to... Yeah. Well, again, who knows what was given versus what's... Who knows? But moving on, Karen Chen. So she's giving us Latin programs, Latin-ish, likes a black dress. All right. That black dress that she wore is far more offensive than what Tanya wore to the Jurassic Park. And I think people were just <laughs> hating on Tanya because that dress, it's a far deeper slit and far more risque with the fake flash, okay? So here's, here's what I think. We've got Karen Chen, who's a lovely girl and an author. <laughs> and an author and a figure skating icon. That's right, self-proclaimed a figure skating icon, Karen Chen. Um, but I think the interesting thing is you know, her short program last year did turn a lot of heads. It was sensitive, it was elegant, it was very pretty, it was very honest to her. So I feel like they're trying to do this faux Michelle Kwan moment. You know, let's show you that she's a woman. Let's show you that she can do sexy. Let's show you that she's mature and not a girl. But I was like, but that wasn't a problem. You know what I mean? Like They were considering now, so many other pieces of music for her that were so much better. Elegant and graceful. Yeah and classy like she could be she should have a classy program these are ashley wagner showy kind of i mean she went to the choreographer that mtm used that more towers and moscovich used i mean that is who mark Pillay is i don't know why we are using him this season doesn't she get big funding now that she's national champion i don't think so i don't i mean they think this is why we have to write the book so that we don't see this in the look that free skate, I didn't see any choreography that looked paid for. That looked like she did it herself. I mean, it looked fine. It wasn't going to help. Was... The stab at the, like, all of a sudden, she's just skating generically to Carmen. She's not, like, acting it out. You know, she's doing the Debbie version, not the Katerina version. Yes. And all of a sudden, at the end, you stab yourself. It looked like an afterthought, like, oh, I'm doing Carmen. I guess I'll stab myself here. And you're she like, She oh. is not someone that I would ever think needed to skate to Carmen. Um, no. She actually looks really into it, which is both heartwarming and sad at the same time um, because it's just a miss for me. I don't think that it's going to help her win another national title. I don't think that it's necessarily going to hurt her because I don't think that the competition in the U.S. is... That immense, yeah. I hope she goes back to her other short. Yeah, I wouldn't use Tango de Roxanne if Tessa and Scott are supposed to have some iconic program to it or going to win another Olympic gold medal to it. I just don't think that it... You don't want to compare yourself to Tessa and Scott. Ever. Because, it, again, you know, in the idea that, like, the program was skating Mariah, or, you know, like, if an outfit is, like, wearing someone, like, that that program is so heavy and oppressive, and it's so, like, and it, it's almost, 
we have our qualities, which she has qualities, so she doesn't need to do like a glitz smoke and mirrors program like and that. And are they ever going to address the triple triple issue? We under rotate the second jump every time. They, she that has the wrap. This is big. Her lutz is so big. Yes. Is it that, you know, like speaking of Tanya, since she's the name du jour, is yes. it, you know, Tanya always jumped such a huge first jump, she almost landed with too much of a thud to ever like get that second triple. I mean, I think so. we saw the triple triple one time, you know, and they. And Karen lands on the whole blade, typically. You know what I mean? Uh, she, she really is quite... She's almost too arched or something like that, but I don't know. There's a lot going on. Um, and just the program, it just... I don't know. It, just, it all looked sloppy to me. The, the dress, the packaging. <laughs> yeah. The drug. The, there was no need for the gloves. I just didn't, I didn't see the need for it at all. Um, yeah. Moving on to our bright yeah. spot of the day, which was Marin Honda. I believe the smile and the pigtails that was the last time we're seeing it because the La Procita program wasn't working out so they brought this back quickly and she's supposed to be getting a new one yeah she really does need to I mean I understand if they were like well we gotta have something this time around because our first option wasn't working but yeah. this is it's too cutesy and she's beyond that too now. cutesy and cheesy and I think look people skating men watching it underage girls pigtail no um just yeah you get what it i'm is, saying and we're gonna move on really young in a senior event so yes. i mean i'm sure you know with the turn dot then being such a uh, 180 so the turn dot i love the dress and don't you say me that she looked hunchy like you did with mariah bell i actually did love the dress and i'm not just yeah, she looked uh, beautiful she did. <laughs> i thought that the, i thought it worked for her i don't love it as much as the romeo and juliet but i think it has an olympic moment i think it has a mature quality yeah. i think that there's a lot going um, yeah, it was it was a bit heavy, you know. When everyone said that um, when Mao skated to the bells of Moscow, that it was too heavy for her, mm -hmm. I actually disagreed on that. But I do feel this is a little bit big for her because what I love so much about her skating is that it's carefree and effervescent and beautiful and flowy, mm -hmm. and this feels a bit heavy to me. But I just love her no matter what, so it doesn't really matter. It worked for me. Um, I thought that the lyrics actually helped lighten her up. I love uh -huh. the footwork sequence. I felt that everything here, the spins, the jumps, were all kind of going for a base plus one GOE and that she's really going to have to up the quality of everything. I think some of it can be early season, some of it can be the altitude, but I just felt like the spins, we, we've seen her do everything better. Um, I thought that it was better than she started off last year. I mean, last year she was always having uh, mistakes in the short program, always popping the axle at the end, so she got through those. She does well, have... I was looking... Oh, well, first of all, the altitude, I mean, it looked like she was drunk at the end of her program. Like, I, she was, like, wobbling around. Um, but her, I was noticing her elbows so much in her air position this time. And then, I mean, it's just like a classic air mm -hmm. position. I was like, why am I noticing your elbow so much? And I was going back and looking at Karen and being like, no, everyone kind of does that same idea. Mm -hmm. But she rotates so early, right? Mm -hmm. And so elbows are just like a smidge delayed. So for some reason, once I clued into that in the turn dot, I couldn't stop staring at her elbows. It's amazing. It's amazing she keeps her center almost because of how quickly she's rotating. And then this elbow situation i'm curious to kind of just watch that as the season don't ruin marin honda for me stop it okay no, just no, because i love her so much it's no. so so beautiful um yeah that the jumps awesome. aren't the best part of her skating definitely i mean the jumps are the thing that we get through to enjoy the rest um but she does them very nice and very musically yeah yeah um i uh i have to say that i think that Zagitova might be the IJS unbeatable girl, especially with yeah. Vidova having some difficulties. It's yeah. one or the other. The program is a nightmare. Both programs are nightmares for me. I don't understand why you give someone a, two ballet programs, neither of which is a Sasha Cohen type. You could talk on the phone during Zagitova's program. I mean, really, she's not even doing jumps until two minutes in, Jonathan. I... I... Uh, she has Here's jumping the, legs. It's better than a Terry's usual. Yeah. I, I think she, she is so immensely talented. Mm -hmm. So it's a shame. Um, I wish she had different guidance. You know what I mean? Because it's kind of this just like just add water instant like faux ballerina thing. Where like even the dress is trying to fool you into thinking she's the reused dress. <laughs> uh, 
is like trying to trick you into thinking she's more balletic than she is. Um, I have to say I didn't hate it as much as I thought I was going to because I was so grossed out by it last season. And I was a little like, okay, she has the energy. The short she has a lot of confidence, so she projects a lot, even if it's in the short. In the short, you can tell. I don't know if it's because it was a new program or what was happening, but it was another thing. Like she was like barely holding on mm-hmm. to the edges of it, and it was you know, and the axle failed her, and she was like barely getting to each next move. She just looked mentally distracted or chaotic or something during the short. So. Um, but when that's probably under control, I fear that these scores are just going to be astronomical. And, and I the 147, I mean, that triple lutz, triple loop yeah, is fantastic. Brilliant. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. That jump, I mean, yeah. it's... And clean as a whistle, like, no question about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so well, I wish her PCS weren't so far apart from Marin Hondas. I don't understand why... I think the Lombardia scoring was a bit generous in general. It was a bit more Dovian ornament of last season. Uh, and okay. it, I don't think you can really compare event to event as much, especially here. This was, to me, they were two parallel universes that are sort of marginally okay. the same sport. Um, okay. Wakaba Higuchi. I wrote down, well, no one's coming for her artistry. I thought that she at least... Like, you talk about the opening moments. She looked very engaged. It was better than Scheherazade. Um, the Adele. Oh, I, the opening of the, of the James Bond. She does, like, a dramatic, like, this sort of thing. I did giggle a little bit. But, like you say, she's owning it. No one's there for the artistry. Give us some wow factor. I felt like, like she made a good case for the team. Me Especially as Satoko. Oh, the jumps are fantastic. In flux. The jumps yeah. are fantastic. She needs a yeah. Why, I, does she try the triple axel or she needs to try quad or some like quad crazy triple, combos you know, or she, needs, she needs something to support quad toe maybe or something yeah I don't know yeah. she's that kind of like she's she, she's Midori without the triple axel Tanya yeah she's yeah yeah she needs that like one or two elements that just like makes her stick out and you know she's probably got it so she's like Mikiando when she doesn't do the quad cell I mean we're waiting for it um Otherwise, I would cut Baby <laughs> Hara at this point. I mean, it's just, you know, you yeah. have to have to keep people. You have to go for the showy skater. I mean, we're going to send Jason to the Olympics, whether or not he's doing that right. quad. So, I mean, you have to. All right. I mean, Carolina Costner. I mean, she's like, um, you know what else just happened this weekend was that evening of champions that happens at Harvard <laughs> or whatever. Are you comparing the her to the, the Protopopovs? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Like when you shine the photo phone boss, like you're like, oh my gosh, how are you still skating? Like when it when you actually like think about like the first time we saw Carolina Costa, I was like, I've been watching you for like thirty years. I've been watching you forever. This is so on in that element, like it's really amazing. It's I th- really amazing. I think that the the music choice is lovely. It's iconic. I mean Lori's clearly wanted to give it to her for decades. Mm-hmm. Um and as much as, uh, look, we, we're going to get like one good program out of her this season, I think, right. in each event. You know she doesn't even like start landing triples until about December in the past. Well, I keep being like, but, you know, come on, triple flip, triple toe, that was her combo. And I was like, really, no, it wasn't. It was always triple toe, triple toe. And she only pulled that combo out for the Olympics. Yeah. Like, so I just have to remember, like, it's a slow build. So her. I think we're going to get one nice thing on the podium. That, like, we got Carolina last time. And you know that, like, the stars had to align for that. I mean, we paid for that with Adelina's medal. Um, right. So I, I believe that this year, right. if we want Marin Honda to medal at the Olympics, you know Carolina's not. It's just, right. It's well, just... The, short, the short was lovely, but the long was a bit of a snooze fest. For me. You know you're getting two Terry medals and a Marin Honda at the Olympics. Like, that's what's happening here. That's... Yeah. The world always balances out. It always does. You know, it's, uh, (laughs) you can't win the house and the presidency. It doesn't work that way. Um, (laughs) uh, yeah. So Jonathan, as we move forward, how do you picture the Adam Rapon Rihanna self singing? The, the karaoke (laughs) version of a short program, you know, I don't even want to make predictions because it can't be as good as, like, the first time hearing it. I, like, the, I'm really looking forward to hearing that for the first time. Is he doing a senior B, or do we have to wait till the Grand Prix for that? No, I believe he is. I forget which one he's doing, but I believe it would... 
Unlike Ashley, he shows up at these. But again, Ashley doesn't need to because she knows that program. So, and so do the for judges. Sure. He's yeah. literally been doing it for as long as Caroline has been. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jonathan, what was your moment of the week this week? My moment of the week was Nathan Chen's. Oh, also, the we have to talk about the Lombardia announcer that oh. would thank all the skaters. <laughs> like everyone would do like something, he'd be like, "Thank you." And they were like, you're welcome. And also the camera work at Lombardia, what was that? It would be like close-ups of people's like midsections and then like the back of audience members' heads. It was I, really yeah, it was, and he cut up all the programs were chopped up. I think he maybe like During soccer. Like or Jason short program combo, you couldn't see his feet. Like you just saw his midsection. You and just they saw don't... his butt, the entire, yeah. Yeah, was... I was like, okay, all right. Um, but my moment of the week, I'm going to say is Nathan Chen's footwork. Okay. In the free skate, in the free skate, because I thought it was pretty spectacular. Oh, and Shoma's opening move. This, mm-hmm. yeah. My moment of the week, even though Marin Honda did skate, it was Shoma Uno's combo spin with the arm on the music. I have to say. Yeah. So as always, we want to remind you: hold an edge, look sexy, and don't skate to West Side Story. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>